very clear. Bad. We have students who come from all over the state, and for many of them, it's, it's wonderful to see them sort of have this growing relationship with the town, uh, the city of Greenville, because they'll come in from tiny little towns, and to them, this is the big city. And they experience with, uh, this with such you know, <clears throat> open eyes. Uh, but we want them to come back and say, what do you do after 10 o'clock at night when they roll up the, in the street, you know? And particularly in the tech industries where a programmer doesn't work 9 to 5. He may work 3 to 2 a.m. and then let them know where you go for the beer. So what you've got to be thinking about is what are the career opportunities? What are the places where you can make a name for yourself as aggressively innovative and exciting to be around and yeah make money too but money's the frosting on the cake for an awful lot of young people they want money but it's not what motivates them it's the sheer joy of creating something wonderful and we don't have all the resources we need to hand to the young person who wants his resume and they'll say, damn, that's cool. The millennial spiritual life is becoming much more important to them than people who grew up in, a, in our generation. They, they, a lot of them want to come back and, and work here, but there are not the career opportunities available to them. There are resume building opportunities available here in the arts. And even in lifestyle, it's got to be more than biking. It's got to be more than you can get to the mountains. When kids say they're going to Austin, they say they're going to the party. You know, and we're not the party yet, and we've got to have at least some of that. Um, I now feel that I've stayed in the community here, and having that stay makes me want to come back and stay. And I think that's what we're missing. When we talk to somebody or anybody or a community or we're in our workplace, that we get the equal playing field. That people don't just look at us and say, "Oh, well, you're young and a little bit." quick to make decisions or you'll learn to adjust to that. We don't want to hear that, I don't think, as much. I think we're much more along the lines of listen to us now, listen to what we're hearing now. And I think if a young person wants to come back here, what the research says is if they have no connection or, or no no one in this community respects their voice or their insights when they're young, what leads them to believe that they're going to be respected when they're an adult? So you're losing a lot of really good people because they believe that they're not going to be listened to later, unless they're already connected through their parents. A lot of times I see closed um, social networks um, and professional networks. And I can even walk into, I'm so used to it now, um, I can walk into a networking meeting and I can pinpoint 10 different groups in the room that I can't penetrate unless they come to me. I've heard a lot about, well, we need to create this and we need to create that so they'll come. What I have learned in doing this work is they should come to create, They're not have it here. Why come if I'm not part of the creation? But it's giving them the permission to come here to create, which I don't think exists. We do live in a very affordable environment, but companies aren't going to attract that top talent unless those salaries can match that talent. You know, why, why not go to Chicago and they offer you $60,000 a year versus forty seven to do it in Greenville? The only reason I moved back here was because I had an illness in the family. That was the only reason I moved back here. I would have probably never came back to Greenville. Um, and when I asked them about what, if, what are the things that would keep you from coming back to Greenville, most of them wanted to move. Um, they generally like Greenville. But I said, what are the things that keep you from coming back and discourage you today? Every single one of them said the restrictions that you place on us as young people. Nobody wants to listen to us. Nobody wants to hear anything that we have to say. They just automatically assume that we're there to cause trouble. Come to talk at us, but you're not talking with us. There's not a conversation. We're not part of the conversation. We're just in it. Be around because I want to build a name for myself in Greenville. And it seems like, uh, I think you said something about that. Good old boy network. I see that a lot. <laughs> it's hard to, to get in that circle to talk to them because it's like you, you're not shunned out, but you know they won't listen to you as far as the relevance of your opinion. This is a very engaging community, and Greenville was ranked fourth in medium-sized cities as far as volunteerism. Eighty over eighty percent. I would say like eighty-five percent of our students that are graduating go to college in our area. They go to 
confirm it, and they get closer. A handful probably get a U.S. date, which should be their reason. I mean, if they're here, that, that someone can't reach out to them and, you know, entice them to stay. And I am the chairman of the Greenville Chamber of Commerce this year. <laughs> and I am very interested in your voice and hearing what you have to say. I know that the generations before me, I'm an native Greenville, Greenville, and the generations after me, I know for sure that my life, from your young age to my age, is like that. You will be here tomorrow. <laughs> it just flies by. <laughs> so get involved early, stay involved. <laughs> Bring them forward, the volunteerism, give them back. This is not a good old boy in the negative sense. This is the great old people that want young people to be great too.